This video is going to be for building this bird feeder. Um, as you can see, it's, it's almost seven foot tall. It's extremely round, large. It's a nice bird feeder. This nut and washer holds the feeder onto the post. So if you want to take and remove the feeder for a hurricane or bad weather, or you're simply moving from one place to another, it's, it's very easy to take this nut off and then remove the feeder. Um, Okay, so first thing we do is we're gonna we need to make eight walls. These are the wall of the bird feeder. As you can see, here's one where I assembled all the walls together. Uh, it takes four pieces to make each wall. So we'll, I'm gonna show you how to make a wall. <clears throat> These are the uh, posts that go on the side. As you can see, they have an angle on one side and square on the other. there you have it. This piece is the bottom piece. It goes right here. All it is is a piece cut to width and length. Square, square cut. Um, this piece here is the top piece. Uh, this will be also something you could have in the uh, plan. It comes with a, uh, a pattern. It won't be a wood pattern, it'll be a paper pattern. Uh, what I tell people, if you're going to be making more than one, go ahead and get some quarter inch plywood and make your pattern out of that. You just put it on here and trace it off. I'm going to have to rip this down a little bit. That'll set our width. And we'll just cut it up to the width. We have our top piece, bottom piece, and our two posts. Now what we're going to do is cut this part shape with our band saw. That'll be where we're going to put it together at. Okay. Put a mark on there. And we'll mark our other side. Like that. We know where this goes. It goes on the very bottom. Like that. Okay. Once again, we're using this type glue here. A uh, two-part marine epoxy would be better, but this is uh, sufficient. It's waterproof. That's all that we care about. We don't want to use something that's not waterproof.
You can buy these at Harbor Freight. I believe it's seven dollars a piece. That's that. And I'll let that dry for about eight hours. And then I'll come back and take the uh, clamps off. What I can tell you at this point <clears throat> is to take a wet rag and wipe this glue off. Because what that'll do is save you a lot of sanding. Once this glue dries, it's hard to sand. Okay, now we let our walls dry and what we want to do is sand these edges here where the walls come together. Okay, that's done. <clears throat> Next thing is tracing this out onto our plywood bottom. Very important that you use marine grade treated plywood. If you use any other thing than that, you're wasting your time. Because everybody's not perfect, this isn't perfectly octagon. That's why we're doing this. So when we put it back together, it'll it'll come back to the shape that we want, instead of being like that or that. Okay, so we'll take that and set it aside.
It's locked in. It ain't going nowhere. What I'm doing, I'm shooting one nail into each post and one nail into the cross member. and cutting it off with a knife is the best way to do, approach that. If you try to take it off when it's wet, it will smear everywhere. So I just let it dry and then I'll come back and cut it off. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to mark the center of this for our post. We're going to be drilling one hole in the center of it. be a 13 sixteenths hole. Okay, as you can see, it's 13 sixteenths. <laughs> what I do is I drill halfway through that little hole there. If you drill all the way through, it'll tear out all the plywood. So you want to drill through just enough to find the hole. At this point in the game, we've got 33 pieces into this project at this, at this stage right now. This stage here, there's 82 pieces into it as it sits right now. And as you can tell, we still have to build a roof. But uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on getting this to this stage. And first thing we do is we'll turn it on our side. And we want, want to make sure this plywood is flush with this. So we'll just take our belt sander and sand off all the glue and make it flush. upside down and we're going to be building this part of it all these are is a two by four that's cut in half I've already cut uh, some pieces on the table saw and basically you just take a two by four and run it through and cut it in half and then that creates your pieces that you could use here <clears throat> again always make sure this lumber is dry if it's treated lumber, make sure it's been it's dry because when you go to put this stuff together, if it's wet, <coughs> it'll start coming apart on you. It'll when it, it'll shrink, it'll make cracks and gaps. Okay, so I got our saw set at our angle that we need. 
And since we already have this frame here, we're going to cut an angle on all these pieces. Always cut the first angle. So there's really no measuring you have to do. You can just lay this on here, line this edge up with our cut, line it up with this right here, and then mark the other one. Okay. So we know that's where we're going to cut it. And initially what I'm going to do is just have some two inch nails. I'm going to use a two inch nail to shoot it into the floor. Just like that. And then after we get it done, we'll come back and we'll screw through the floor into that with screws. We'll take our next piece and just go right around like that. Then I also glue each piece together. Okay. Making sure this is flush with this. Now in a perfect world, every one of these would be exactly the same. But I'm not perfect, so I measure them as I go and cut them as I need them.
four put this last piece on, <coughs> I'm gonna put the two by four in here first. The reason being is, if I put this piece in there, when I go to put my two by four in there, the glue that I put on the board is gonna be taken away and try to put one piece in between two pieces. It'll, it's easier to do that way. So you put two by four in here and then put this to it instead of trying to put a piece in between two pieces. So um, what we'll do, we'll cut and fit this one. That's a little too tight. <coughs> That one marked it. Right there. So we know we put our two by four in. We can't pass that line. So we'll just measure from there. Go a line. It's 19 and 5 sixteenths. Okay. Uh, so we'll just grab a two by four. This is the actual main support for the whole bird feeder. Okay. We're going to glue this here too. We'll do the same thing with that. We'll come back, we'll flip this over, and we'll run screws through here. These nails are actually just something to tack it on until we could get the screws in there. So this will be getting a lot of glue. Okay, so that's that. <clears throat> Next, what we're going to do is we're going to put some drain holes in here. As you can see, I've got drain holes drilled in here. That's for water to, that's for water to drain out of the feeder. All right. Even though this has a roof on it, rain, rain could possibly blow in here and you don't want water puddling up in here. It's gonna one, ruin your seed, and then two, ruin your bird feeder, because as with any kind of wood that's outside, water's the enemy. You wanna make sure you can get rid of the water. After you have the bird feeder, periodically you come out here and check the drain holes, making sure they're not clogged up with bird seed or whatever. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to take a 3 8 inch drill and drill our drain holes. <clears throat> and 
And what I usually do is put one at each center of the opening. And it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Then where these two by four is, I, I usually put one right here in the corner and then one over here in the corner. Okay, so now, like I told you before, we're going to go ahead and put our screws in to hold our framing to the plywood. Um, what I like to do is <clears throat> I like to uh, pre-drill with this. Just pre-drill it. That way when you put the screw in it doesn't tear up the floor. And, it, and these don't have to be precise. We know the boards right here. So we're going to put two screws in each board. So we'll just pre-drill Now we marked, we marked where our 2x4 is, right there, and we're going to pre-drill for that too. We're going to put two screws on each end, and then two like that. Okay. As long as you have six screws, two, four, six. And then what we'll be using, eight by five an inch and five eighths stainless steel. Okay, that's all the screws, and uh, <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to drill <clears throat> our hole 
through the 2x4 for our mounting post. And what that is is 13 16 drill bit. frame in, what we're going to do is we're going to trim out the bottom first. We're going to be putting this piece on here all the way around. And for that, we'll just use this pressure treated one by. Uh, these are already cut to the width. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put this edge on it, this decorative edge, like that. And what we do take them over here and we'll run our decorative edge on all. This one already has it on. So I'll put that in there. And uh, get a close-up view of that. This is called an OG. It has a decorative edge on there. What you do is you set the part where it curls out, you set that to where it's flush with this. So when you run it through, it'll make the, uh, I'll show you a close up of, of these when we're done. But you just run it through one time on one, on one edge. saw set to the angle we need and we're going to cut one angle on here okay and then uh, let's see I don't know how you can get a shot of, a shot of this or not uh, but we want we want the top of this decorative edge to be even with the top of our plywood. And we'll just line this up here with that. And then we'll put a mark here where that goes. So we, I know I'm going to be cutting this way. So for the next one, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this angle for our next one while I still have it in this position. Okay. Then we'll flip it around here. That. <coughs> Look at that, it's perfect. Okay, so I don't like that. 
don't know why that's doing that. Maybe I need to get a new blade. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do to get rid of that is just take it like that. This particular piece doesn't get any screws in it, so I make sure I use plenty of glue on it. got so much glue on there it wants to float around. Same thing. Once again, in a perfect world, you could cut eight of these the same way and put them all together. But it's best to do each piece at a time. That way, it's you're uh, making sure it's right. Cut something too short, you can't add on to it. So, try that again. Now we're putting these together, you want to glue this too. Repeat that and do that all the way around. All the way around.
fuzzies going on here. Yeah. And as you can see, this board here sticking out a little past this one. This one's sticking out a little past that one. That's okay. When we get done with this, you'll never see that. They got this thing. It's called caulking. Comes in handy. Then I'll mark it here with my pencil. eight of these pieces that go all the way around the top. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to nail it right here and there. So I'm going to put some glue on it. That. Place it on there like that. This is where our roof's actually going to be sitting on this piece. Our plywood sheathing is going to come down and rest on this, so we want to fasten it really good. If you look behind here, what we're going to do is we're going to take, just to, to uh, secure it a little better, we're going to take a cleat and put here to tie this piece and this piece together. And, uh, what I use is just some scrap. Uh, three quarter by three quarter. Yeah. Now, as you can see, I didn't measure those because nobody's going to know about this piece but the birds that fly in here. This is just something to tie these two together, and make it and stabilize it. So that one's done. And then basically you do that seven more times. <clears throat> okay. So we'll 
keep going around. Hold this up there like that. So you always keep a wet rag to get all the glue drips. And we'll router our edges. You probably can't see this on camera, but a lot of times you'll get lumber that's supposed to be three quarters, and one board might be slightly uh, thicker than the other. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the. This this is actually a little thicker than this one, so we're going to uh, run it through the table saw to make sure that these are both the same thickness because it's, it's important because they all have to be the, the same when it goes around here. this to be past this because we're going to be cutting this at an angle so what we'll do is we'll mark the inside here like that and we know that's going to be three quarters of an inch so we'll take uh, this 
scrap piece of wood. That's three quarters. And we'll mark it. Like that. Piece out and this piece out. Right. Now we're going to notch it out with our bandsaw. basically it right there. You do that seven more times to complete the shell. And, uh, don't worry about these gaps here. Here and here. You'll never see that in, in the finished product. As you can see over here. You'll never see that. Okay, as you can see, we put our bird deck all the way around. Establish our height here. Okay, so how we do that is <laughs> move, Jack. Put it on here. First, let me show you this profile. Okay, the round part goes on the bottom. And the piece that's square, you want on the top like that. Okay. 
So what we'll do is we'll hold a straight edge up. This is where the top of our roof is going to be. Okay. So we'll hold the straight edge right like that. And like that. And then we we'll see where it intersects. That's where we want to mark it. Right there. Like that. Okay. So, what we'll do is find out this measurement, and we'll go around and mark, mark it. And that'll be where the top of our drip edge. Okay. So, make this a little easier to work with. We're going to cut it in half. Just like we did these boards, these, we're going to put this over here right where <clears throat> these two come together. We're going to hold it on our line. And then we're going to mark this right here. world there'll be eight of these same size but I can tell you it's not perfect because I'm not perfect Do is just work your way around. That's basically it. You go continue around, putting your pieces on, and that'll be the end of that. Next, the next stage is we're going to prime this and prep it for paint and paint it.